than Timo Werner, even though he's still going to be criticised for not scoring the goals. I mean, he's won in his last 15. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it doesn't make for good reading, but he started, he started, he's getting involved now because of this new position that Tuchel has used him in. In a, in a, it's like a left ten. So he, he, he drops, he's able to drop in and use his deadliest um, asset, which is his space. But how impressed have you been, Precious, with um, Tuchel so far? What's he done differently to bring in calm? You're fifth. You, things were looking really, really bad just like a month ago or so, but you're fifth now. And if Leicester beat Liverpool today, who knows? <laughs> okay, um, let's start from the um, Timo Werner. Um, talk. Um, I like the fact that you mentioned the, uh, the change in position is some, some sort of um, left turn. Um, I think we should credit Frank Lampard for that because the, the same thing was what Lampard tried in his final game in charge of Chelsea. He played Timo Werner in the same position as well. And Werner was much more involved in the game. You know, a player like Werner, his skill set is not ultimately suited to playing to be, uh, playing on the wings completely. He doesn't have an excellent first touch. Okay. Um, I know United fans always had that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. He, he doesn't have an excellent first touch. And he's not the kind of guy who will beat you, who, who has very very good close control and who is very good with the dribbling no but he has blistering pace and his ability to walk the channels so that that change has worked well for him and the game against Tottenham he has won um, is it two penalty kicks now in the game against Tottenham he got the assist the penalty kick and then the game against Sheffield as well yeah he drew the, the foul from the goalkeeper as well okay so he's doing considerably well he just needs that ball to hit the back of the net yeah and then things will, will get up for him I'm happy for him precisely because of the fact that he's not hiding Okay, I would have been worried if he, he was doing an Alvaro Morata or a Fernando Torres who would be hiding, on the, hiding away from passes on the pitch here. Okay, so having said that, let's come back to uh, Thomas Tuchel. Uh, he's got a win percentage of 80%, win ratio of 80% as Chelsea manager, which is fairly good. Okay, only punctuated by the um, barring draw in his opening game against Wolves. Yeah, so... And then they've had two scrappy wins on the bounce. The FA Cup game against Bansley yeah. and the game against Sheffield. And I like the fact that uh, even though they didn't play particularly well, they were able to um, pinch the, the, three, the three points. Yeah, so that, that's a good one. And I, I think tactically what Tuchel has done is to not introduce radical changes. Yeah. All right, you don't, you don't, he said something, he, he said, as much as we would have loved to um, bring in our impose our style of play on the guys, we, don't, we really don't have training sessions um, where we can drill in our idea of what football should be play, played like uh, to the guys. Because you have games week in, almost week in, week out. You play midweek, you play on the weekend as well. So you, you spend most of the time preparing for the game itself. Okay, than trying to, to introduce a philosophy to the guys. Yeah. So what he has done is bring him some stability, first of all, to the back line. They've had a very, very cons um, stable back line. Okay, they've played a back three um, predominantly, and there's been Antonio Rudiger. I, one, one thing that he has done is to play the guys where they are comfortable at, especially the senior players. Rudiger was, remember the FA Cup game against United um, under Antonio Conte? Okay. Yeah, when they beat uh, Moreno 1 0 in the FA Cup final. Remember, Rudiger was the man of the match. He was super awesome playing as the left centre back in a back three. Yeah. So he has restored him back to that position. Um, then Thiago Silva remains in the central, the, in the, as, as the last man in the, in the defence. In his absence, there's Andres Christensen, who the jury is still out on. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. He, he, he's a, Christensen is a very, very intelligent defender, but just doesn't give you confidence. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's got Aspilicueta as the right side. Of the back. So, so things are fairly stable. However, I am looking forward to to what he's going to do with Ngolo Kante when he is back and fully fit. fit. Yes, um, I still remain of the opinion that Kante sh does not belong currently to Chelsea's best 11. What does that mean? Yeah, uh, Chelsea. <laughs> I, I really want to know what that means. 
<laughs> okay, I, I think I made this same statement last week okay. on Twitter and someone, t uh, the guy was like, you don't know what you're saying. <laughs> but it's true. Um, in the game against Bansling, Golokante had eight interceptions. Very, very good for a, a, a number six. Very, very good. Okay, but then what does he do with the ball after intercepting, after getting it? Yeah. That's one thing. So he's, he's, uh, if, you, if you are going to play a system where the guys have to move the ball quicker, then Kante is not your man. All right, um, he's much more suited to a counter attacking team. So at the moment, Chelsea's best midfield duo will still remain Jorginho and Kovacic. Kovacic. Yeah, that's because Jorginho can sit. What Jorginho does is that he does, he, he, becomes a third center back when Chelsea are in possession okay so there there is little or no need for the center backs to uh, step out of the back line with the ball okay he gets the ball and does the transitioning Kovacic has the ability to break any presses he's almost press resistant yeah. okay so he is the guy who transitions the ball from midfield so. to attack and then the forwards ha can take over from there now with N'Golo Kante He's very, very good if you are playing against a team who will dominate possession against you, where you know that you're going to be doing most of the defensive work. But Chelsea will not be playing too many. There are not too many teams in the Premier League who will dominate possession against this Chelsea side. So it means they have to be proactive. They are going to almost always play on the front foot. Right. And when that happens, N'Golo Kante almost becomes a luxury. Okay? So I am interested in seeing what Thomas Tuchel will do with a fit N'Golo Kante if he is going to be brave enough to now switch the system again to accommodate N'Golo Kante. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, but so far so good. It's been a decent um, first few games for Thomas Tuchel. It's a Legbetter TV radio.